We have come this far by faith. We are kept by the power of God. God is good and faithful. It is our prayer that the seeds planted in your heart through the hearing of the word of God will bring positive change. This is Gifted Church Podcast introducing Pastor Kwame. The scripture says, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. One of the things that I know is that God is love. And that scripture talks about the fact that because he's love, we know his children by the love we have. And I want you to understand something today. We're going to turn our love towards God today. In the next few minutes, I want you to express your love for God in your heart. Father, we want to fall in love afresh with you. We want to say that we love you. We want to thank you for who you are. We want to bless your name for the fact that you are being kind to us. We find ourselves in many places, but you have been kind to us. We thank you that you've forgiven us our trespasses from the beginning of the year up to now. We thank you that you've been caring for us. You've been kind to us. You've been very good. And and on today, we want to just de- begin to declare that, Father, we love you because you first loved us. We honor you because you first honor us. We thank you because you are the one that has given us everything that we have that pertain to life and godliness, the promises, the protections, the things that you have done for us we are grateful oh god we thank you and so we want to thank you for our family our friends our finances our future be glorified today in jesus mighty name amen and amen father we are grateful we are so thankful for who you are in Jesus name child of God I greet you in the invincible name of our Lord Jesus Christ and I'm grateful to God for this this, I don't take it for granted every blessed day that God gives me a word I want to speedily bring it to your hearing I know you are doing well I know your family is doing well I want to just say one thing God is in love with you and even in his punishment he's in love with you even in his chastisement he's in love with you the scripture says god only chastise those he loves and i hope that you begin to embrace the love of god for your life in jesus mighty name let me get on my assignment today praise be to god i have something to share with you on today the lord just laid on my heart i will begin the podcast today by sharing a little bit about the process that goes behind how God gives me a word. Because it's very interesting. Let me share it before even I start everything. As a matter of fact, I don't have the burden to share the word of God with you. Because if I place that burden on myself, then it's going to be very um, kind of difficult for me. I checked uh, a couple of days ago that we've literally been having the word every day so we have about almost 310 messages so far on this podcast and so imagine if i had made it my responsibility to share the word of god with you for all those days where i ask myself what am i going to share so i don't place that responsibility on myself i place it on god and on the bible so I don't know what I'll be sharing until I study the night before. And then based on the study, God gives me a word. So I'm never stressed out. I'm never worried about what am I going to say tomorrow? What am I, if, if I had made this my responsibility, then it would have been a big headache for me. But I place it on God. So I don't know what God will say. I sit and I listen as I read. And God is always faithful. But on today, God gave me this word, which is a which was a little different because he gave me what to say he wants me to share three things with you and when that happens it's a little difficult because now i have to find a scripture to to back what god is saying right and luckily god did it himself and took me to this place and we're looking at nehemiah chapter 13 the verse number six the reason that uh is difficult to share some of these beautiful flyers that we use for our verses on this platform is because all our verses don't make sense. <laughs> you have to listen to podcasts for the verses we put here to make sense. Just, they are kind of out of nowhere. Some people even don't know whether they are in the Bible or not. Amen. So 
even though our flies are beautiful, when you share it, it doesn't edify people unless you listen to the podcast. And this verse is a typical example. All right, let me get back to work now. So the Bible says in Nehemiah chapter 13, the verse 6, the Bible says now, while this, it says, while this was going on, I was not in Jerusalem. While this was going on, I wasn't in Jerusalem. Let me tell you where we are going with this. I'm going to exegete this test, bring out the, what this is about, give you the context about, and I'm going to hold that thought. And I'm going to talk a little about leadership, and then I'm going to come back and speak to you what God wants me to tell you. Praise be to God. So, Nehemiah is considered arguably the greatest leader in the Bible. He's not the greatest leader because he's bigger and better than Moses and all the other big guys. But he's the greatest leader because his leadership role caused us to understand that in every obstacle, being a leader is a very challenging work. To be a leader is a very difficult task. But Nehemiah was able to navigate through all the challenges and become a great leader. This is what happened. He was in, um, he was serving in Babylon and he heard that the people in his hometown, Jerusalem, were not doing well. The walls were broken and things were down spiritually, morally, and psychologically. So he asked permission and came back and with great leadership overcame opposition and was able to restore Jerusalem again. And so at this point I'm reading, he went back to his base in Babylon and everything fell apart. So the point I want you to understand is that anytime there's no leadership, things will fall apart. All right, so hold that thought for me. Secondly, now, I have the privilege to listen to a very educative radio station program. And that radio station program, they feed me with global news. I've been listening for the past nine months now. And I don't know if the radio station is aware of what they are doing, but one of the things that I always receive from the radio station is the fact that the world is going through a crisis and it's not global warming, it's not world hunger, it's not HIV, it's not poverty. The number one crisis the world is going through is global leadership crisis. Because anytime I listen to that news, they're always talking about countries that are struggling with their leadership. They start with America, they go to all other countries all over the world, and the number one consistent problem is the problem with the leaders of those countries. So on the larger scale, the human race is it's facing global leadership crisis. Leadership is a critical piece, right? So now Nehemiah is, a, the verse is telling us that where there's no leadership, things fall apart because Nehemiah has struggled financially and done this great work. But when he went back to Babylon, everything he has instituted because the institution that was restored under Nehemiah's leadership was amazing. The, the church was restored. The kingdom was restored. Revival broke out. And repentance, it was, it was amazing if you read the book of Nehemiah. And he left for a while and everything he had painstakingly done was falling apart. Now, stay with me. I'm going somewhere today. So, first thought, without leadership, things fall apart. And number two, leadership is what the world is missing. Now, with those two things at the backdrop, God gave me a word to tell you that before 2020 shows up, he wants you to do three things. And the reason I chose this verse and start talking about leadership, God says, tell my people, Number one, tell them to lead their lives. Lead your life. God says, I should tell you that you are the president and the leader of your personal life. And so tell my people to lead their life. And all of you understand bad leadership. And so God says, tell them that if their lives are falling apart, then it's bad leadership on the end. So I want to encourage you on today to lead your life. The difference between just living your life and leading your life is what God is saying. He says, my people are living their life. I don't want them to live their life. I want them to lead it in leadership. Be the president, the CEO of your personal life. And let me define leadership. Leadership is as it's more simple than you think. Leadership is to lead a people or a person from one point to another. 
that is leadership in other words when you are leading your life i shouldn't catch you 2020 november the same if you are managing your life you will be the same next year but god says tell my people to lead their life i was driving in the middle of the night when i got this word tell them to lead their life in other words have a leadership strategy and plan for your life and if you need to know how to lead anything lead your life hallelujah in other words take yourself from one place to another Plan how to move forward in life. God says, tell them to lead your life. I will come back and touch on some practical things to do, but let me move to the second one. God says, tell them to grow their life also. Grow your life as in intentional growth. I have a group of people I mentor every other Tuesday. And when I teach them to grow their lives, I don't tell them to grow your finances. Maybe you grow your business, but grow your personality grow your your love grow your caring ability grow certain things that will make you better hallelujah and lastly god says tell them to impact other people lead your life don't leave your life lead it number two grow your life i'll give you some practical ways to do that and number three impact people praise god because Nehemiah gives me the understanding that if I don't intentionally lead my life, my life will fall apart. Nehemiah left the leadership to some people. When he came back, things were falling apart. So number one, lead your life, else your life will fall apart. Don't leave your life, lead it. Direct your path, direct your steps. So maybe an example of leading your life is to define where your life will be by next year. And God gave this word on today because the the holiday is about to kick in and you're going to get busy. Before you know, the year has come and you are not ready to lead it. So imagine where God is taking you. And as I prophesy into your life, I want you to take the prophetic word and apply it as a leader. It's easy for you to lead your life because you know you can point accusing fingers on president that are not doing well. Because you are saying that if if he's a good leader, this and that and that will happen to the country. In the same way, if we're a good leader of your life, this and that and that will happen to your life. Praise God. So if your life is not improving, you are a bad president of your own personal life. Praise God. So God says, tell them to be good presidents of their life. Tell them to be good leaders of their life. Learn how to lead your life to the next level. So that's what I want to say. So with the leadership, you know where you want to be. I can't really tell you where to lead your life to, but lead it to where you want to see it. And do that by intentionally not putting your life on hold for anybody, but having a cabinet meeting for yourself and deciding the path forward to lead yourself. Hallelujah. And secondly, to grow in any dimension that needs to grow, to subject yourself to certain things that will grow you. Praise God. But my passion, you know my passion, is the last one, to impact somebody. Your life is not useful unless it is impacting somebody. And the truth is there's somebody who is more sicker than you. There's somebody who is more tired than you. There's somebody who is more poorer than you. There's somebody who is more weaker than you. And intentionally going to that person and tell them, once every month I will send you this. So that you can use it for that. Or once every month, I will come to your house and help you with this. Bring me your... You have to intentionally sow your life to help somebody. Trust me, there are a lot of people that are worse than you. And God has made it such a way that he always creates somebody who is worse than you. To give you an opportunity to impact somebody. There's a girl who is more lonelier than you. There's a guy who is more poor than you. There's a sister who is more whatever than you. And that person is what you must impact. Look for somebody and impact that person. And God wants you to do that. And as you continue to do that, I believe that you are going to see his glory. Praise God. So these are the three things I want to just leave you with. Practically lead your life. Be a, be a better government of yourself. Be a better leader of yourself don't manage your life lead it take yourself from point a to point b 
Take yourself to the promised land. Take yourself to your place of God's glory. Take yourself away from where you are. Take yourself away. Lead yourself out of this misery. Lead yourself out of loneliness. Lead yourself out of self-pity. Lead yourself out of negative mentality. Lead yourself out of insecurity. Lead yourself out of jealousy. Lead yourself out of sexual sin. Le- oh my God, I'm preaching you good. Lead yourself out of mental um, agitation. Lead yourself out of sadness. Le- oh God, help me. Lead yourself out of it. Hallelujah. Number two, grow yourself out of small thinking. Grow yourself out of things that limit you. Grow yourself out of fear. Grow yourself. Oh my God. Grow, grow yourself. Grow yourself. Increase your capacity. Grow yourself. Grow yourself. Increase your thinking capacity. Grow yourself. Increase your influence. Try new things. Grow yourself. Try new things. Grow yourself. Go to places you have not been to engage new people grow yourself mentally spiritually take challenges grow your prayer capacity grow these are new year resolutions it's a trick i believe that's what god wants us to have grow your prayer life call yourself into a new level grow hallelujah and lastly adapt something adapt somebody (laughs) let me share a thought with you I don't know if you know this, but you can adapt, you can, you can, in, in life, you can buy a place or you can buy time. You know, there's some places called timeshare where you actually buy just a time for a place. You know, so you might not be able to help anybody, but you can give an hour of your life to somebody. Say spiritual timeshare. I will give you an hour a week for you, sister, just for you. If I call you and you are busy, I will pray for you for that hour because that hour I gave it to this sister. Impact people. Amen. That is what this podcast is about. We want to find somebody and tell him good things until they change for the better. Amen. Intentionally force I force people to come on this platform. I force them to come. Even though they, I don't need it. I mean, even though it's like, why are you trying to let me hear this? But I want to force myself to become important to somebody. In, don't die without affecting lives. If it means starting your own podcast, you can take what I have and find some girls and say, girls, let's discuss this today. What he said is good. Yesterday was not that good, but today is good. You take the good stuff you get, and then you also discuss with other friends. Impact people. Live your life to impact people. I have so many people that I intentionally impact them so that I will not die without serving my generation. Lead yourself. Don't live just your life. Grow. And lastly, impact somebody. There's a lot of young girls that sees you ladies as pretty lady. They want to be like you. As soon as you find out that these young girls admire me, take three of them and call them my girls and just monitor their progress. Answer their questions for them. God help us. Let us live our lives to impact people. That's my passion. Let's pray. Father, we thank you today. I hope that I delivered your word the way you gave me. May you, O God, give us the wisdom to lead and the capacity to grow and the grace to serve. In Jesus' name, amen.